ringing Josh Mandel, candidate for the United States Senate in the great state of Ohio, United States Marine. Got him? Good morning. Good morning. Is it Lieutenant, Captain, Major? What are you? Uh, I actually finished up as a Staff Sergeant of Marine. Well, Staff Sergeant. That's, that's great. <laughs> How are you, Josh? Bill Bennett here. I'm great, Bill. Always good to be on. Josh Mandel, candidate for the United States Senate in Ohio. Looks, things are looking pretty good, aren't they? You're moving, huh? They are. We just got a new pullback. We've uh, cut Sherrod Brown's lead down to single digits, and uh, we gained about 12 points among independent voters, and the momentum is on our side. Josh, just want to know what's selling, what's working, what is it you're talking about that when you finish, people, you can see the heads nodding. What, what, what is it that um, you're saying that they're saying, yep, right on, Semper Fi? Well, we actually just put, came out with this new economic plan, and it's like a jobs plan that no politician has ever presented in Ohio uh, because there are zero ideas in there of how to spend other people's money. The, yep. entire, plan is, the other, entire plan is how to get Washington out of the way. And so it's raising a lot of eyebrows, and it's gaining a lot of attention throughout the state. And we put together this entire economic plan about getting Washington out of the way from lowering taxation to simplifying the tax code to – lessening regulations, balancing the budget, and just getting Washington out of the way. And uh, it's really raising eyebrows. We've got a ton of media attention around the uh, state. And while we're talking about the free enterprise system and why Washington is the problem, uh, our opponent, Sherrod Brown, who, as you know, is off the reservation to the left, is talking about how he thinks government's the solution to everything. Yeah. Now, you've had experience in Ohio with that approach, right, with the spending and the Washington approach, and it didn't work. Um, uh, there's a new climate in Ohio. Uh, your governor is, is working on it. Uh, it wasn't well received early. Uh, I know it's not the same plan as yours, but it, it, are people understanding the need um, to cut back on spending and to refocus um, efforts uh, in a way that will stimulate the private sector, not from the top down? Uh, they are recognizing it. You know, it's interesting, over the past few days, I've spent a lot of time in the uh, Democratic part of uh, Ohio, um, Appalachia along the Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky border, probably two to one, maybe three to one Democrat to Republican. And uh, even in that part of the state, everywhere I go, people are saying, Josh, get Washington out of the way. We know how to do it better here in Ohio. And that bill is specifically part of the state where coal and oil and gas contribute so much to the economy. Yeah. And you got Obama and Sherrod Brown and a lot of these fringe environmental groups trying to block the coal and oil and gas from uh, creating jobs here in our state. And so we're bringing a lot of Democrats into the fold who understand that our natural resources are assets. And you know, a lot of Democrats who are an ultra-liberal, you know, a lot of folks who go hunting on Saturday, church on Sunday, believe in peace through strength, and uh, 20 years ago would have been those Reagan Democrats. Yeah, no, that's right. And that's still, uh, still a land where a lot of them are. Uh, give us some specifics on the economic plan. We're curious because we follow things pretty closely at the state level, as you might not be surprised to know. We're following Scott Walker's uh, issues and challenges in Wisconsin. He appears to be doing very well. And now we're following, on the other hand, states like California, where they're just saying raise ta or my state, Maryland, raise taxes and, you know, increase services and just keep ratcheting it up. And you know what's happening? People are leaving. People are leaving those states. Go ahead. There, you know, I was actually down in uh, Texas a little while ago. There you go. They were, tell they, they were telling me that their greatest import is Californians. <laughs> is that right, California immigration? Yeah, I mean, they said that, you know, because of the, you know, you look at uh, California, they're raising taxes. Texas has no income tax. California has this uh, terribly aggressive uh, junk lawsuit problem. Texas had aggressive uh, lawsuit abuse reform. Uh, California is an enormous union state. Texas is a uh, free market state. And so you know, here in Ohio, we're doing everything we can to uh, embrace the free enterprise system and get government out of the way. We had an $8 billion budget shortfall when uh, I came into the treasurer's office and right. uh, Governor, Governor Kasich came into the governor's office. And uh, not only did he and the legislature uh, bring that to a place of balance, but uh, here in the treasurer's office, we've earned the highest rating, a AAA rating from S&P on the $4 billion investment fund I manage. We've earned the highest rating from Fitch on the short-term general obligation wow. bonds we issue. 
Um, we've cut the budget in the office significantly, uh, and uh, we think we're leading by example here in Ohio, uh, uh, definitely uh, showing other states how it can be done, but most importantly, showing the, these crazies in Washington uh, how it can be done. I mean, these folks, Bill, as you know, they haven't passed a budget in over 1,100 days. I do know think that. about that. Did you see you the I mean? president's budget yesterday and the Senate went down 99 zero? Correct, correct. Yeah, we, yeah. What we talk about as we're traveling the state is if families sitting around their kitchen tables have to balance their budgets yeah. and small businesses sitting around their conference room tables have to balance their budgets, you know, why shouldn't these uh, politicians in Washington? No state is probably more of a microcosm of the United States than, than Ohio. And, you know, we mentioned, I mentioned um, uh, California and Wisconsin, obviously the battles with the unions. You went down to Texas. It's right to work state. But Ohio has unions, right? You have a lot of unions, a lot of union members. How are you being received? We do, you know, we have a we we do have a significant uh, amount of uh, union members and households in the state, and you know, a lot of those union families are are welcoming me into their communities as well, because you know, we found a lot of these uh, men and women who might be steel workers or auto workers or coal miners, what have you, they're Democrats by and large, but they're not ultra liberal. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these folks uh, understand that the only way to bring our state and country back into prosperity is to stop wasteful spending in Washington, is to stop the overregulation of their manufacturing employers here in Ohio. I was in, uh, a few days ago, I was uh, sitting in the cab uh, of uh, 18-wheeler with, uh, with a truck driver, um, and uh, this truck driver was going on and on to me about how the fact, you know, the fact that he does not have a college degree, has a you know, just a high school diploma, but he's get he's receiving a good, high-paying wage. He's got a good job, living a nice lifestyle with his family. Um, but the U.S. EPA and these regulations in Washington yeah. are hurting him from uh, excelling. And this is a, yeah. I don't know if he was union or not, but this is a blue-collar truck driver who's looking in the eye saying, "Get the EPA out of our way." Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. when you're hearing that from uh, rank and file, you better believe you're hearing that from folks who are running the companies as well. And you know the. U.S. EPA, the National Labor Relations Board, right. over and over. You can right. talk about all these organizations. They have this attitude in Washington that businesses throughout our country are guilty until proven innocent. No, that's and that exactly we can't right. have our, our government treating businesses like that. We're talking to Josh Mandel, candidate for the United States Senate in Ohio, uh, uh, Staff Sergeant in the Marine Corps, uh, Treasurer of the State, uh, other uh, distinguished service for his fellow citizens. Josh, before I forget, website, this is a national race. We, we have a national audience People want to find out more or contribute. Where do they go? Sure. Our website is real easy. It's uh, joshmandel.com. It's just uh, J-O-S-H-M-A-N-D-E-L.com. And wherever in America you're listening this morning, I can tell you that our Senate race here in Ohio, uh, you get a twofer when you uh, make a donation to our race. Uh, we call it the force multiplier because when I run strong and win this fall and beat Sherrod Brown in the U.S. Senate, we're not only going to help take back a U.S. Senate majority, but when I run strong and win, we're going to help Mitt Romney across the finish line here in Ohio. That's and great. so uh, wherever you are, we appreciate your consideration of investing on our race, and uh, we're going to make sure Ohio delivers uh, America a Senate majority uh, and uh, a new uh, leader in the White House. You're going to come back to Washington. We'll do another lunch for you if you do. I'd love to see you, Bill, and uh, appreciate your family's uh, investment and sacrifice through the Marine Corps uh, as well. I, oh, I'll remember. finish up by. Yeah, I, I remember. I, yeah, I, he, I, was, I well, he had a. You guys never forget when you meet a family member. He they had a rough week this week. We had tons of thunder, lightning, and rain, and he was out as he says out in the field all week, Mom. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bill. I'll, I'll finish up here by uh, telling you what I was doing last night. Last night I was in a town called Mentor, Ohio, yeah. and uh, I, I was at a Marine Corps League Hall, and uh, there was this uh, gentleman there who. Uh, Earned a Purple Heart in uh, Vietnam, but for whatever reason, administratively, uh, never received it. Uh, and I had the honor last night uh, as a 34-year-old 34, 34 uh, you know, uh, guy who served in the Iraq War of pinning on this Purple Heart wow. of a guy who's, who was around my dad's age who, uh, who never, uh, never received it when he should have uh, from Vietnam over 40 years ago. And that was one of the greatest honors I've had in my life to uh, look this gentleman in the eye and thank him for paving the way for uh, young guys like myself who had the honor to serve in the Marine Corps now in this generation. Fabulous. We will leave it there. That is a beautiful ending. Uh, I know what it meant to him and I know what it meant to you and to all those present family members. It must have been great. Josh, we are with you. You will see this audience is with you. Come back anytime you want to talk to the national audience. We're always here, okay? 
Thanks, Bill. Always good to be on. All right. Good luck to you, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you for what you did for our country and what you will do for your, our country in the future. Josh Mandel, folks. We'll